Yes, the tortilla flat mural is quite large and can take a lot of time um, to, to digest all of it. So I would encourage you and anybody who might be seeing this footage, if they wanted to visit the mural, to start here at the beginning and read the description of what we were uh, trying to do. This is my name right here. I was the project coordinator. And um, this is, uh, was intended, uh, the mural was intended to be a narration. So all through the mural, you could read things. So like, you don't necessarily need anyone to, um, to tell you about it, all right? That's what we did. We did a lot of this mural uh, in, in what's known as sepia tones. This is like a sepia tone. It's a lot of variations of the same color, like brown. And, and you'll see some other ones as we go. There's another one up there that's brown. And the idea was that when you look at these, um, these drawings, these pictures, that it would look like an old black and white photo, you know? But then on the other hand, some of them, we just wanted splashes of color. I mean, this is something that we do as artists, okay? So right away, this first, this first section is dedicated to the families. And each section on both sides of the street uh, is dedicated to something else. It might be the, the businesses, it might be the activities that people got involved in, it might be the, the end of the neighborhood. So uh, right here where we're standing, you'll see up there Gibson's Barbecue. Buddy Gibson and his sister Betty are still alive. They live in Oxnard and they lived directly right there. That's where they lived. Because you got to imagine this place with no freeway. There was just no freeway um, like there is now, okay? So let's just, the other thing we did is that we took a lot of pictures. Uh, well, we didn't take these pictures, but we found these pictures. This was taken in 1906, and we interviewed this guy. He has since passed on, uh, 1906. He was 88 when we interviewed him, and he went to sh school. He said, you can tell the Indians, we went to school barefooted, you know? And now this, this one was taken in 1948, and we were able basically to identify all of these students. The ones that are alive today would be um, definitely in their 80s, in their 80s. So, so you could get the sense of these are people from you know, a long time ago, a long, long time ago. We have this one here. M.B. Hanrahan was the artistic director. And we did this one to explain um, our process. We had been painting that day on the mural. And after painting, uh, we went and interviewed a Chumash elder, Didi Juarez. She has, she has also passed on since this. And um, this was good because it shows, it shows me interviewing Dee Dee with a cassette player, all right? And a little cassette and a map, and she's telling me things. And all of the Native American imagery, this is a photograph of Grandpa Samu all of this stuff was actually in her house. So in this one alone, we pay homage to Native Americans, okay? And there are some guys, Seaside Park was right, right, right over here a little ways. The fairgrounds still calls themselves Seaside Park, but there's some guys, um, 
I know one of them is still alive. Uh, but we knew these people and what families they came from. This is just something that used to be here, a little adobe, and these are like from, taken off of a whale. You know, it was Las Palmas adobe. Okay. Here's a, here's a picture of the Barone family, and if you look at these pictures, this one and this one and this one, I mean, they're just adorable. They, they're just. Yeah. How could we not put the, something like this? I mean, yeah, they, they're, and it was an old photograph. You could see how it's yellowed, but we left it there because we want you to think a long time ago. I mean, this dog here, man, sheesh, he makes the picture. <laughs> Be quiet up there. B has passed on also, I'm sorry, I have to say uh, most all of these folks have passed on, but uh, she was, she was an early environmentalist. She took plastics um, and she collected all these plastics and put them in her front yard. And you see this is little pieces of carpet cut. And that's her driveway. That's her actual driveway. And all the rocks in her yard, she painted them like that. And, and she was an amazing guy, person. And she was being interviewed for, uh, for a TV program. And the guy, um, Huel Hauser was his name. He's probably before you guys' time. But Huel Hauser had a TV program, and he went to interesting places all through, all through um, California. And he interviews B, and when, he's, when it's over, he's looking for his dark glasses. You know, and he says, where, where are my glasses? And people who saw that episode remember that, that he was looking for his glasses. So we take artistic license, and way up at the top, we painted his glasses. His, so when people know, see that, they know. They get the, they get the joke. And those are just things that, there's a whole lot of things that artists can do to get other messages in. This is again uh, the Barone family. But we wanted to show how people would actually go to the beach and fish, you know, and sand fishing. You don't see a lot of that anymore, but that was right here. This was another family, and some of the photos that we took, we wanted you to see what the houses looked like, you know, in, in the background. So, and we were also purposely trying to get as many different families as possible to represent them in the mural, okay? So, now this one was a picture that we found and we didn't know who these people were. Somebody had passed this picture to us and it was just like that. And it was just a great picture. I mean, isn't it a great picture? Yeah, it so, like it belongs on a phone card. Yeah, so, so we painted it, and we didn't even know who these folks were. And then this guy over here, let me show you real quick. See the guy in the middle up at the top? Yeah. Okay, he came to one of our events, and he sees this. He says, that's my sister. Oh my goodness. And, and he was able to identify um, uh, uh, identify her and her and her husband Herbie. Herbie just died like last year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all of these, all of these uh, paintings have a backstory, and it's really deep and it's really rich. Here's a couple. Here's a couple um, 
of school um, pictures from the 1940s. So these kids too would be in their 70s and 80s. And this was a test to see um, how they would do on a mural because the sun does a lot of damage to things and they're beginning to fade. But we're also trying to uh, find the pictures and, and redo them. And I'll show you a couple that have been redone. This was another one of those times when we felt we needed a splash of color, all right, and another sepia tone. And we were also, I told you in the beginning about Buddy Gibson. Buddy Gibson and his sister. This is his sister, Betty, and uh, Buddy is right here. And Buddy's mother had this picture of their class, and she had the she had the fortitude and, and, and the knowledge to write down every kid's name on the back so we knew every one of these kids name and we tried to reach as many as we could that's part of what we did as a process here's a picture this is a redone one this got damaged and we took an, uh, we found it fixed it up and I mean, I just, some of the, the little Barone kids are right here. Two of, two of them are right there. And it's these kids at a party in 1950. So those kids are probably in their 70s too, the ones who survived. And over there, oh, I passed one up that I didn't, I didn't talk about. Let's go back. Because we're not going to do the whole mural today, but... We'll do this side and we'll go back and do the other side. Because I'm going to run out of battery or, or, or tape. Have you? Yeah, I'm, I just want to take us through the first one oh, and tell we're people good. how to do it. Thank you. This was a picture that um, all of these guys were from the old neighborhood. And this was uh, overseas in Korea. And... Um, in the original picture, this guy was not in it. But this guy went over to the war and he was killed over there. And back in those days, you know, they used to bury the, our soldiers over, overseas. Their bodies didn't even come home. So this guy, when he went off to war, his wife was pregnant. The baby was born, and the baby never knew her father. He never came home. But she had his picture. And she came to us and says, this is my dad, can you put him in there? That's what we do. We just pop them in there. It's the only thing she was able to do for her dad, who she never met. So we were painting this one of military guys from the neighborhood, and then we get to this one. And a woman drove by, she saw us painting that one. She says, my mother was in the military, and I got a picture of her. So Hope Esperanza Marquez got her picture in the room. This is how we did things, you know. We were actually painting already. Now, I would encourage you, you know, because it's, it is large, that to come back and read what you can about it and take it all in. We're proud that, that this is now like 13 years old and it's not in that bad a shape. It, it could use some cleaning because the freeway the, the suit from cars it comes underneath and it just it's just really black up at the tops you know and then it could it could drip down and be really really dirty but the mural goes on and documents um, a lot of things and we got the images 
by that process of interviewing people who used to live here. I was born there, but I was an infant. I have no memories of the neighborhood. I was just really a baby when, when we moved out. So, I mean, um, just, just to show you some things, you see that baseball player over there? Ventura had three minor league baseball teams. And they played baseball right here at the parking lot of the fair. And it, that was called Babe Ruth Field. And so we put that kind of history in there. And Mr. Mr. Wang, the Chinese man, who had these incredibly long fingernails you could see there. And, and, and he, 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 would, he would not dress like us Western style. Mm -hmm. He stayed in his Chinese clothes. And uh, he, made these, uh, he made these kites. And he would go to different places, maybe on the beach or maybe to a school. And he would fly these kites. And so that dragon up there is a kite. And, and, and that's, that's a part of, of the national market that Japanese people had. And over there you see the Green Mill Ballroom. And then at the end, you see they're burning down the houses at the, at the end. And uh, you see people building these, uh, uh, the freeway, yeah, the infrastructure of the freeway. And so the mural goes on like that, talking about the people and, and talking about the places. And people like myself and others involved in the project, we just love to talk about it, right? Yeah. Because the story is so deep. There, we've seen people come out here, people who maybe didn't know their grandfather, and point, so that's, that's your, it, will, it might be a mother talking to her kid, that's your grandfather. <laughs> Look how handsome he was, you know? And they're proud. Uh, uh, the mural, the story just resonates with the people around here. Most of the people in Tortilla Flats still live around here. A lot of them live in Oxnard, but they didn't move far away, you know? And so it's, it's a living piece of art, all right? And I would encourage you, maybe at another time when you have more, come back and take it all in and, and see it. So, yep. Have some 